Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, Marina. Hello, Alec. Hello, Roman. Hello, Hi, Hey, Hi, everyone. everyone. Wow. Awesome, 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 awesome. Please tell us whether you can hear us, whether you can see us. Both of us, please. If you hear me well as well, let me know. Yeah, okay, and, hey, and Larry, please, thanks you can so already hear <laughs> where you are. Yeah, sorry, I will be interrupting Ilya all the time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, great. Simon, awesome, Jesse, awesome. Greg, wow. Awesome. Hey, everyone, please tell us where are you right now? So just say, hey, from Amsterdam. Hey, from New York. Hey, from London. Hey, from Ukraine. Hey, from Poland. Just say, hey, New York. Oh, my God, Laurie. Hey, from Pakistan. Hey, wow. from New York. Wow, awesome. Ukraine. From Lviv. Okay. Eindhoven. Eve. Oh, wow. Netherlands. North Carolina. Carolina. Oh, my God. There's a... Ukraine again. Oh, my gosh. From California, so Greg. Israel, Israel Bangladesh, Sweden, India, India. India. Oh, oh, my oh, oh my gosh, all over the place. We're like speaking globally. So uh, beware of, of everything that you're saying, Ilya, please. Yeah, Julia told us that it sounds like, like Eurovision. Yeah. I, I now hope it's so. a if scene I'm contest. Enough, I hope that I'm qualified for the Eurovision contest. But yeah, thanks for joining all over the world. And definitely that's a pleasure for me being a part of this fantastic series of webinars because Ilya for me is a star and becoming one of the hosts, uh, it's just such a such a great honor for me, honestly, Ilya. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. All. <laughs> <laughs> now I it's like, wow. <laughs> thanks a lot. So, okay. Um, please tell us whether you can see my screen right now just say in the chat yes or no i'm sharing the slides um just tell me whether you can see it yes 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 okay. yes uh yes 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 okay awesome awesome thanks a lot so let's start we have only 60 minutes and we have more than 130 slides to share with you that's an amazing content that we prepared for you so many practical tips so let's start uh, by the way, uh, there will be a recording, but you need to stay with us, you know, to get some bonus that we've prepared for you. So just stay with us. So why, do, oh, okay. first of all, what is the topic of today's webinar? It's actually how to implement LinkedIn Bridge for SaaS sales teams. And why we've decided to, to cover this topic actually today, because we have Marina, who is a head of sales to expand you right now. But the, like Marina is one of the best director of sales or head of sales I've ever seen. And Marina has implemented so many cool techniques, especially when it comes to LinkedIn outreach in other companies. And right now is, she's implementing this at Expandi as well. So Marina, hey, how are you doing today? <laughs> Great, thank you so much. And uh, let me just briefly explain to everyone who's on the call uh, why I'm here and why we we are touching based on this specific topic. Maybe even some of the people joining us uh, know me personally or had a chance to work with me. I've been a um, director of sales development in two previous companies, successfully implementing LinkedIn outreach just prior to joining SaaS companies. I've been leveraging LinkedIn and service environment, which is quite common for service companies. But uh, uh, back in the days, for some reason, LinkedIn hasn't been leveraging in poor outbound motion as much uh, as I started to do that at VGS and AppsFlyer. So if there are any former colleagues, I say hi to you and probably you would recognize some of the tactics and tips that we will be sharing just because we've been there and we've been doing this for many, many times. Awesome. Oh, and let and me know if you know me or not. Yeah, let me uh, tell me in the chat if you know me or not. It will be uh, uh, just a um, nice tip for me. Um, yeah, Ilya, over to you. Um, I saw the question. It's not the question. It's uh, the comment from Fenar. Please just wait for like a few minutes and you will see the content that we prepared for you. We really did a great job. Like, yes, I understand that it's it might be a bit too much, but we really did a great job in terms of preparing the cool content for you. So, and one more thing that in 62 minutes, we'll share with you the bonus you will love. So stay with us and we'd love to share a little, like a, a nice gift for everyone who is with us today and online. So let's start. Before we start, 
before we start. Um, can you please share with us who you are? Are you a head of sales, sales specialist, founder, lead generation agency, or or other? Um, just say it in the chat uh, so we know. Like we already are, of course, prepared the uh, the whole presentation. But the way we share the information will be a bit more applicable for based on who you are. Okay, I see sales. I see oh. other head of sales, sales dev, rep, digital marketer, digital founder. Marketer. Uh, huh? Digital marketer, uh, director of marketing and sales. So. Yeah, quite a variety. Business variety. mentor, CEO, oh. marketing lead, lead generation mentor. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's start. I'm pretty sure that everyone uh, knows this, um, that LinkedIn is dead. Like we heard that for so many times, I don't know, for years and years, LinkedIn is dead. And to be frankly honest, it's almost true. Like it's partially, but it is true. Back in the days, you know, LinkedIn like, like this. That was the place where so many recruiters are reaching out to you and trying to, you know, say, hey, let's let's work with us. Or there was so many spammers, people who said, hey, I saw your profile and I want to sell you something. And that was back in the days, a horrible period, a horrible, you know, dark times of dark ages of, 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 of LinkedIn. And that is true. At that point of time, a lot of people just stopped using LinkedIn. Yeah. But how, how this LinkedIn platform, like this social media platform went from this, when, hey, I came across your profile and I want to sell you something to the place where you can actually generate leads. Basically, the whole story is extremely simple. LinkedIn started fighting against spammers back in the days. And you can feel that and you can see that. Now you have much less people who are reaching out to you and much less people in your inboxes comparing to what happened back in the days. The second one, now you are limited with the amount of messages that you can send. But in reality, you see that those limitations are coming to LinkedIn, but in reality, this is a really great thing because LinkedIn started really limiting a lot of um, spammers and a lot of people who are trying to spam on LinkedIn. And as a result, you now have less irrelevant people in your inboxes. And as a result, you, as a person who want to reach out to, have more chances to be seen because you have less competition. Now you don't need to compete with spammers because there are no spammers or like much less spammers than it was back in the days. So that's basically why on LinkedIn, you can get these great results. Like the results like this, you know, 30, 27, 35, okay, 10% reply rate, which is like insane number. It's a huge number, really. For everyone who's writing cold emails, even 10% reply rate, that's a great result. But 25, 30%, that's a huge number, right? So at the same time, LinkedIn is still the number one B2B social media platform. That's the only one, but at the same time, it's the number one. It lets you build your personal branding here and there. You can get, um, you can post there. A lot of people can consume your content. You can grow your, um, your follower base, et cetera, et cetera. And as a result, LinkedIn is coming back. You see that? That was a really decline in the amount of people who are who were actually using uh, LinkedIn. Now it's coming back. As a result, it's a really important thing is that, okay, it looks like a paradise, but it's actually not. We need to understand that LinkedIn right now, it's not the same as it was before, but we need to understand what is LinkedIn version 2024, right? So the first one is now you're limited much more with the connection request that you can send. You cannot send just thousands of messages per day, even though it was not possible back in the days, but you could reach out to so many, so much more people back in the days. Now you're much more limited. And that's a great thing because not only you are limited, but also the spammers and your competitors are limited as well. The second one, your profile matters a lot. Your SSI and uh, how relevant your LinkedIn profile is now it actually matters a lot. The third thing is that LinkedIn is only, isn't only about outreach. It's a social media platform where you can share content, et cetera, et cetera, and build relationships there as well. The fourth thing is that you can not really scale outreach with the fake accounts. Now with LinkedIn introducing you verification of your LinkedIn account, it's hard for you and for your competitors as well to use some fake accounts to scale the outreach. And the fifth thing, LinkedIn is still the best platform to get the highest reply rates when it comes to your um, your outreach campaigns. Marina, what are your thoughts on that? 
I fully agree. And so the question is how to make a difference with all of these limitations. And uh, definitely you can use it for your advantage. So that's why I would like to dig deeper into that. Um, first of all, as a, a director of sales development for two previous SaaS companies, uh, you need to understand that the majority of the SaaS companies operating via the um, a proportion inbound and outbound uh, um, revenue generation and outbound is a significantly important part of this uh, pipeline generation effort for any sales development team. LinkedIn, once I've joined the uh, SaaS company, uh, became 30% of a pipeline achieved by the uh, cross-functional teams uh, that I've uh, led in the past. So, uh, but the question is, LinkedIn is a good lead gen generation source for everyone or it's not. And it actually depends on the SaaS um, business model that you have. As we, uh, as we all probably know that there are three typical SaaS sales models, uh, self-service one, transactional one, and enterprise one. And I definitely want to dig deeper a little bit to let you understand why self-service is not a good fit for this model. As long as your um, uh, prices are quite low, you're expecting users to sign up and easily consume uh, the value of the product that you have. The LTV is quite uh, unpredictable and short, and you're not planning to target uh, businesses, uh, and your primary metric is not connected to LTV. LinkedIn would not be a good source and tool to use for you for sales prospect. And you probably haven't seen Slack, Apple, or Netflix reaching out to you over uh, LinkedIn. Definitely they have their sales uh, departments, but LinkedIn is not a primary source. Uh, second uh, SaaS model, uh, sales model that I would like to dig deeper into enterprise. At AppsFlyer, within the teams that I've uh, led, there was the a team specifically working with a tailored list of the enterprise account. And uh, LinkedIn was a part of the account based sale and account based marketing strategy. And LinkedIn works good for these type of approaches for enterprise uh, focus size models. And the third and more applicable in uh, my case, I've been a part of the uh, VGS, which is the data security transactional product. And now like Expandy is a transactional SaaS model as well so far. LinkedIn is a primary and most uh, leading sales generating source for us uh, at this moment. So just to sum it up, if you are operating operating as a SaaS company within the B2C sector or the majority of your customers, uh, like more than 90% are in the space of the sales service, LinkedIn is not your uh, tool to use for prospecting, not a primary tool for sure. Transactional, good. Uh, if you're here from the transactional SaaS model, you will love uh, listening to everything that will be shared. Enterprise as well as a part of your account-based efforts, account-based selling models that you probably have uh, within your um, company. So let's move forward and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Ilya yeah. will briefly share the poll. Yes, guys. Yes, so now I'm trying to do the poll. Just tell us whether you are right now sh like running LinkedIn on free messages, yes or no. And while you're while you're sharing your results or like your your experience with LinkedIn outreach, we'll proceed to the next section. Yeah, we'll speak about PQLs. I've seen in the chat the question. It's a product qualified lead, and we will uh, touch base on that as well. As you have a product, you have different type of uh, terms and namings product qualified lead, the one that sales can reach out to. So what will be covered today on the session? We definitely need to speak uh, a lot about preparing uh, LinkedIn profiles and how to optimize your profiles for outreach. Uh, the ICP and uh, um, audience and how to identify the target audience over LinkedIn, that's the uh, core, um, I would say, value that this presentation and this webinar would have. And we will speak a lot about uh, buyer signals and data enrichment, uh, stay with us. So all the uh, great updates and uh, innovations will be shared. Personalization and messaging, how to tailor your strategy and uh, your messaging and sequencing towards the uh, values that you are bringing and how uh, with, with the uh, audience that you've been identifying as your target, uh, target audience and uh, ideal customer profile. Uh, CRM integration, uh, as a manager, I do really need to see uh, 
uh, in numbers, what are the uh, results and what's the efficiency of LinkedIn outreach for uh, pipeline generating revenue generating uh, purposes uh, and building relationships on LinkedIn, why it matters and how to operate within the limits that LinkedIn currently has uh, for sales development representatives. So uh, overall, if we would uh, bucket this somehow in uh, three different um, uh, strategies, the easiest ways to leverage LinkedIn is to, uh, to uh, keep the uh, keep nurtured the accounts that have been used uh, using you in the past, and you you might uh, hope that they will be reengaged in some time. Uh, we will not be touching this part, but definitely you need to consider that it's quite effective uh, uh, as well. Not ready leads and potential leads. Potential leads that's the outbound leads that we are prospecting, uh, uh, collecting the. Uh, um, audience and building the strategy, strategies for uh, your business. So, uh, most of the conversations and uh, slides will be about the, identifying the potential list and the strategies to uh, effective uh, for effective LinkedIn outreach. Uh, let's go uh, further. And uh, some of the um, companies uh, that I speak with and uh, that I've been a part of in the past uh, had a preconception that LinkedIn uh, doesn't work. So the question is, uh, what could be the reason for that? Most of the uh, uh, mistakes that usually um, departments and sales development uh, representatives do, they choose the wrong audience for outreach. They use poor personalization, just uh, spamming all over the place. If the LinkedIn has 100 uh, connections uh, in a week, they use it within the audience that would never reply to them, and they do not even uh, uh, check, not warming up uh, uh, the audience prior to uh, getting in touch, and ignoring limitations of the LinkedIn. So uh, let's see how we can uh, work with that. If you sell to so, everyone, you sell. Yeah. Yeah, that, let, let me take you from, from, from this part. So like we all know this if you sell to everyone you sell to no one that's definitely true right but in reality in outbound and overall linkedin outreach thing it's even more important because you need to know who exactly you're reaching out to and not be that spammy person who's just saying hey i saw that you are um you are in this industry that's why i want to sell you something right so actually like out of you know the whole experience that we have building your release and building the right you know, list of contacts that you want to reach out to is the like almost 80% of uh, of your success. That's definitely true. And this was, you know, this uh, this tweet was was posted by a really huge uh, uh, influencer in Twitter. So <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, and that's that's my tweet. <laughs> yeah, over to you. Over and, to you. And, Let's speak about customer. <laughs> yeah, I'm just joking. So in and in reality, like you all have this, like you all have the ideal customer profiles and buyer personas. I'm pretty sure that the marketing team, the the, mar the marketing department in your company actually created this. I and buyer persona, you definitely know who you reach out to, right? So if you don't, I will share with you the link. So no worries about that. Just during the next minute or so, I'll send you the link to the article if you don't have the ICP and buyer persona. But in reality, 99% of you and everyone actually have this buyer persona. But in reality, the question is how to use that, right? So, and it's really important when it comes to LinkedIn outreach. Since we are limited, with the number of connection requests that we can send, we need to define who our client is and only the best target audience. That is a really, really important thing. We cannot, we cannot spread and pray. We really need to know who is the best potential client who we can reach out to, right? So when it comes to the SaaS business, you definitely might think about the best correlation between the average revenue per account or average revenue per user and LTV. Once you do that, you definitely can figure out who your client, who your who your ideal client is, right? So by just digging deeper into your CRM or data warehouse, it's easy. But it's really important to take a look at some other points as well, right? So you need to find the contacts or the, the clients who have and who showed the best LTV, the best average revenue per account or per user. And you also need to know several things. First one is you need to have a clear differentiator between you 
and your competitors for this specific audience. If this audience requires CRM integration and you do have the CRM integration and others don't really have that, that's a huge differentiator for, for that. The fourth thing is that unique value proposition on the market. You need to have that not only to the whole company, but to every single specific decision maker in your specific industry and your specific target audience. So if you're, you're the decision maker in your, in your vertical is head of sales, you need to know what is the value proposition for the head of sales and what is the unique value proposition for the average sales person, like the person who will actually use uh, your product. And the, the last thing is that this market and this target audience should be like should be foundable. So you should, and searchable. You need to use Sales Navigator and or some other tools, you know, to find this audience. If you cannot do that, probably that won't be the best target audience to choose for the LinkedIn outreach, right? So uh, yeah, let's do a step back again. How to convert this ICP and buyer persona that you have, that you've created back in the days into the actual list of contacts that you want to reach out Two, and here are several steps, right? So the very first step, which is super easy, everyone is doing that. You use some basic filtering in order to find the contacts, the right contacts, like location, industry, title, size of the company. Everyone is, is using that. Like no matter whether it's in Sales Navigator, Apollo, or some other like search platforms, right? And as a result, you have the list of companies, you have the list of people, at the end, there are still like too many of them. And sometimes you can, you know, just, you are not quite sure whether you are relevant for them and whether you they are relevant for your outreach, et cetera, et cetera. So we always need to go to the second step. And the second step is you need to convert the challenges and the business pains that your clients have into the actual sales navigator filters. And when I say that, what I mean is that you need to understand who your client is and what they what are the main challenges for this specific person in this company. So you will use that not only for finding the uh, the, the relevant audience, but also for better personalization. So, for example, um, if your if your target audience is vice president of sales, it's some companies, say yeah, in IT companies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, try to find recently those people who recently changed their job. So. Vice President of Sales, who just became a Vice President of Sales at a specific company. Why? Because this person has the authority, because this person was just hired. The second one, this person has the budget, because like whenever a company is, is hiring for someone, they usually trust this person and give some budget, extra budget, etc., etc. And the third thing, the really important thing here, is that this person wants to change the processes right now. That's one of the examples. Another one is, for example, if your target audience are, like if some people are a part of a specific LinkedIn group, so for example, if a specific, uh, part of a lead generation professionals group, that totally makes sense for you to reach out to them because they probably might need lead generation if they are a part of this group, right? Another one is that if they're using a specific technology, so for example, you are, um, you're using a really, uh, you have a great um, Zoho SRM integration, you find, all the people who are using Zoho right now, vice president of sales, et cetera, et cetera, in, the, in a specific location and with a specific title and specific size of the company, but also who are using Zoho CRM because your outreach will be much more relevant to them. And the last thing is, or the last example here, but probably you can go wild with those, uh, with, with those um, filters, is um, the department had, had come grows. So if you see that this company is investing a lot of money into the sales department and they are hiring more and more salespeople and they did this for the last year, that totally makes sense for you to reach out to them because they've already invested and they want to invest even more into this department. So your product might help them maximize every single dollar that they invested into this department, right? The same happens when, when it comes to the cut costing, uh, cost cutting, sorry, <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, in this direction. So whenever you use the second layer, the second step of filtering, you are able to find the most relevant audience. And the last thing is that, that the more triggers you have and the more buyer signals you implement, the better list for outreach you get. Because you don't need to find thousands. You don't need to find 
thousands of thousands of, of people. You need to find a few hundred of the most relevant people who are ready to talk to you right now. And you know that you want and you can help them. Because on LinkedIn, you can't reach out to, to everyone. You, can't, you can reach out to only a specific amount of people, like 20, 30, 40, 50 people per day. It's not a lot. You need to maximize every single connection request that you send. So try to send it to only relevant people. That's why we have even the third step. It's an enrich your list with external data. So here's the example of the clay. It's a pretty cool tool. If you haven't heard that about it, just Google it, um, or I will send you the, the link to that. Um, in reality, um, what it helps you, it helps you use some external information, external research, automatic research, you know, to know a bit more about your clients or about this list. So for example, in this case, um, you can fi figure out who got just in, like a new, uh, new round of funding or um, who are hiring right now for salespeople or for marketers or for developers. Or you can also find and figure out, okay, what specific, what are the CRM that they're using? What is the marketing automation tool that they're using, right? Or what is the speed of their website, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many different triggers that you can use in order to enrich your list of contacts. So for example, um, if the company just raised money, they do have the budget, obviously, but the second one, they want to scale the business because they need to get more revenue to get and uh, raise a new fund around, like a new round of funding, right? Uh, the next one is if they're hiring for someone right now, that means that they do have the budget, they want to invest in this direction, and they might have the issues with scaling the processes. If you have team or collaboration features, it's a perfect audience to share it with. You know, so there's so many different things that that you can do with such a tool, and there are three steps that you can always and you should always go through. You need to use basic, uh, basic filter. True. You need to use advanced sales navigator filters. True. And you can also go beyond that with the data enrichment. So how to use it with expandy and sales navigator and clay and so on and so forth. So it's easy as it is. You just go and use your sales navigator in order to search and find the best and the most relevant people. After that, you just go to Expandy and scrape this list. After that, you upload this list to Clay and boom, you use so many enrichment tools and agents that they have not to um, know a bit more about the, these companies and find only the best. You don't need to find thousands. You need to find a few hundreds of the best contacts to reach out to because you're limited with the amount of connection requests you, you should send and you can send. So try to send only to the most relevant and to the best clients. As a result, let me just go through that. First of all, analyze your current clients. Go through your CRM, take a look at who has the best and who shows the best average earning per account in LTV. Talk to your clients in order to figure out their um, their business challenges and, and business problems and, and pains that they have right now. The third thing is that figure out what followers, do, what influencers do they follow, what LinkedIn groups they are in, et cetera, et cetera. The fourth step is convert all of this into the sales navigator filters and then use some data enrichment mode to figure out, okay, who out of you, out of everyone who you found is the best person to reach out to. Um, as a result, you will get 100 to 600 contacts to reach out to. And this is the perfect amount. You don't need a lot. You need only the best. So yeah, one more thing is that in 32 minutes, we'll share with you the bonus you will love. So stay with us because I'm pretty sure that everyone will love this bonus. Um, and now, uh, once you want, once you know who you want to reach out to, it's time to prepare your LinkedIn. So, Marina, can you please share a little bit more about Let the preparation it. stage when it comes to the outreach? Let me take over. Uh, but first of all, yeah, like in the chat, uh, oh, I hope that you find uh, useful all of the information that has been shared so far. And uh, definitely, I try to uh, answer some of the questions. And then, yeah, we'll keep on uh, answering in the chat while I will be speaking. But uh, please share your um, first impression about the first part of the presentation. And uh, we could tailor this to your specific uh, needs more. Uh, yeah, Ilya, sorry, I, I see that you would like to yeah, just share. Are you excited to see more? Because it's just the preparation, just just the, we started with some some, some fundamental things, but are we you... are, we prepared. Yeah, are you 
Are you excited to see what's next? Just say yes or no. Yes or no. Y or N. That's it. Just say yes or no. Okay. Who we have? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. Let's rock. Great. Let's go. Great. Fantastic. Uh, so yeah, uh, before you reach out to anyone, let's make sure that your LinkedIn profile actually matches the requirements and uh, good enough for this type of LinkedIn outreach. This is the example of our CEO. Most of you probably know him. This is Stefan. And he actually uses all of the possible features that has been recently released by LinkedIn just because to keep his profile optimized enough for other people that might be interesting in, in uh, our uh, tool capabilities to easily find him. And uh, it was curious, by the way, uh, a few months ago to uh, speak with SaaS leaders and uh, roast their profiles by identifying how much they actually uh, fill in all of the section of LinkedIn profile and how do they work with the, their image, business image on uh, LinkedIn. It was uh, surprising enough to see that uh, most of the people for, um, for some reason do not use uh, useful tips for that. So let's move forward and see what type of things we would suggest you to take care of before reaching out to the target audience that we've been able to scrap with the power of clay uh, and to filter down with the power of sales navigator. Um, see of optimization of the uh, um, LinkedIn profile. You need to make sure that on your profile, there are all of the relevant keywords that uh, resonate with the value prop of your uh, product or the service, service that you provide. But as long as we speak about SaaS uh, products, the value that you provide. And uh, once uh, anyone uh, looking for growth hacker, you see that the list of people pop up. As long as you don't have these keywords, you would not be able to uh, be easily searched on LinkedIn. Second thing, video CTA. I'm not using it myself, but Ilya is so good on uh, leveraging that. Uh, you can add this personalized uh, um, uh, uh, touching thing by adding not a profile's uh, uh, picture, but also the video that would make uh, more humanized your profile to audience that uh, you're reaching out to. Uh, the next thing that uh, I would recommend uh, myself would be uh, featured links. As long as you have articles educating the audience on the product that you have or any type of the valuable materials that might be a collateral, might be used by your um, audience, please add it to the featured uh, uh, section. I've been on the... Uh, uh, a live uh, uh, event, uh, uh, LinkedIn was telling that themselves, uh, they do not share algorithm or how the profiles are uh, optimized uh, and what would be the best uh, thing, but they did say for a number of reasons, featured profile section and the about section are the most important to make your profile visible for everyone else and for the audience that you would like to be recognized with. So uh, that's why over to your about section. This is the example that Ilya shares. You can uh, look into my LinkedIn profile as well. I prefer to structure it the way like this is what I have done in the past. This is what my expertise uh, um, based on. This is what I'm doing now. And this is my anticipation and what type of projects or what type of skills I would like to adhere um, uh, in the future. Uh, this is really sharp and to the point. So anyone that you know, reads your profile would be able to see that. Uh, next section is uh, uh, definitely call to actions. Uh, I don't see many salespeople and SDRs of SaaS products using uh, call to actions. The links that you and buttons that you can attach to your profile uh, for a specific uh, demo request or book a call or anything like that. But that's so easy. Once your um, potential prospects come to your profile, it should be super easy to uh, uh, get in touch with you, not just with the help of a message, but uh, the other way to book a call and uh, uh, make yourself self-available. Stefan is like that, and I'm trying to be myself like that. And summary, uh, please use it as a place to share some other contact details uh, for yourself. So you still keep yourself available for the audience that might be uh, interested in your product and the value that you bring. I hope that, uh, yeah, and cover image, of course. Uh, I know that C-level people and uh, director-level people are not that eager leveraging that, but visually, 
psychologically is way better to have something on your profile in order to attract the attention of a person that comes to your profile and for some reason tries to identify if it's a fit somehow to continue the conversation or not. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you have any other tips, uh, please share in the chat while I'm speaking as well. And uh, definitely um, pro your profile should be super tailored towards the ICPs uh, that your product uh, uh, identifies. As you see, uh, fantastic drawing skills uh, by Ilya. You can easily identify that his profile is one of the top ones. We have a fantastic, uh, by the way, guide on how to optimize step-by-step -step guide, optimize your LinkedIn profile. I highly recommend it. Uh, to anyone uh, and how to identify with the chat GPT at the level of uh, effectiveness and optimization of your profile. So definitely uh, look into uh, uh, this article and uh, let's move forward. Uh, yeah, this is the example. And uh, how we can map and layer on top of everything that has been said, uh, the strategies for outreach. And uh, now we come closer to the expanding and how to le leverage LinkedIn automation for the audience that we gathered, sourced with the help of Sales Navigator and reach with the help of Clay or any other tool, uh, Excel formulas or whatever. Now is the time to actually create the campaign and logic to reach out to these uh, uh, people that we've gathered. So speaking about Expandy, I've been a customer of Expandy to my previous SaaS companies. And the reason for me back in the days to choose this particular um, LinkedIn outreach product was the safety of uh, my LinkedIn account. Uh, because when we speak about email, it, will, it could be easily... You know, it's sad when the email deliverability decreases. At the same time, you are able to create a new domain and uh, keep it warm and, you know, start all over again. But as long as you are suspended or blocked by LinkedIn, this is super sad. You uh, lost everything with all of your connections and history and everything. So you need to choose the safest and the most relevant way to um, automate your tailored uh, messaging to the tailored audience. Uh, Xpindy was the uh, cloud solution and still is a cloud solution that helps you out to do this safely. Additionally, it has additional features that uh, I definitely want to highlight a little bit. Uh, Xpindy has proxies. So the way LinkedIn actually identifies you as a spammer or uh, has a higher probability to identify you as a um, uh, spammer, it's the way that uh, other, I would say, not safe tools uh, interacting uh, with the audience, sending messages from the service they have, I don't know, in the US or anywhere else, and you still keep on logging in from your location. So it's really easy for LinkedIn identify that something is going on, any suspicion, act suspicious activity happening in two different locations. So Expandy gives you the way to uh, uh, make sure that all the automations are um, simulated from the location and on behalf of uh, your profile from the location that you are actually living and operate from. Uh, this is really important and you need to uh, make sure uh, that you're taking this into account. Uh, other thing is making sure your social selling index is good enough for you to start the outreach. Uh, while we are speaking, you can easily check the uh, social selling index for LinkedIn profile that you currently have. And my suggestion, we have a few articles about that as well. If your social selling index is lower than 60, there are no like strict guidance on that, but my personal experience, lower than 60, you need to have a chance to warm up your profile and social selling index before you start reaching out to your audience. And thankfully, Expandio also gave us a chance for in our previous companies to do that with the warm up feature that uh, it has. Yeah, like, uh, please get back, Ilya, just to show everyone. I will be super curious to uh, hear in the chat if anyone has ever faced with this message before. I faced it myself long back in the day, so I, I was scared to death. So what are the ways to actually avoid receiving these messages and making sure that your team, sales development team, is actually protected uh, and has a safer way to uh, uh, leverage LinkedIn? This is the warm-up feature that I previously mentioned. Mentioned, 
here how it looks uh, in, from the inside of the platform, you are able to slowly start warming up your profile by sending out and uh, identifying for yourself the number of connection requests and messages that you will be sending out automatically using uh, the platform. So over time, it helps you up to um, warm up your profile and get to a better uh, social selling index uh, score. It's everything visible on the platform. You can uh, see and check your social selling index performance over there as well. And yeah, the good thing everything could be uh, uh, within the limits you can uh, set this up by yourself and uh, control yourself within the platform this is super cool and uh, for me back in the days one of the reasons I joined this fantastic company was these type of things uh, that uh, uh, helped me out at my previous uh, roles and I truly want to educate others on how to do that um, LinkedIn limits factors as I told you already, a social selling index definitely is the primary one that you need to take into the account. Into account. Secondly, as long as you operate on LinkedIn as you do on the email and sending out mass um, connection requests to people who may not even use LinkedIn anymore and they don't actually active on LinkedIn and you not do not withdraw old requests. Uh, you also over time could be identified as a suspicious person uh, doing some prospecting and spammy thing on LinkedIn. So please, these are some of the factors. No one knows the exact number of uh, uh, factors that influences your LinkedIn limits, but please pay attention that you are operating within the limits that LinkedIn has that gives you the luxury of reaching out and uh, to the right audience and having such a higher um, replies. At the same time, do not uh, become a spammer and please operate within the limits then, uh, that LinkedIn provides. And we actually uh, spoke before about how to do, tailor the audience and make sure the limits I wisely spent uh, for your outreach. And over to you, Ilya. And in 23 minutes, we'll share the bonus you will love. Uh, yes, um, that's uh, so keep in, uh, keep, keep with us. So, so keep watching this, this webinar only 23 minutes and you will see really cool bonus. So uh, thanks a lot, Marina. Uh, let's go. Let's do some outreach for, um, for your sales business, right? So Actually, you need to understand who you should connect with, who you should to reach out to. Like that's that's the question, right? So there are actually several several you know types of the outreach campaigns that you can send. It might be inbound. So whenever people sign up for your product or people who submitted the form on your website, and then you can reach out to them in order to keep in touch with them and keep and build relationships with them, so your close rate will be higher. We'll talk a little bit about this. The second yeah, one, I, I it's Alban. Uh, sorry, Ilya, will be interrupting. We will cover it briefly, and definitely I would like to share some insights based on the uh, product-led growth and sales uh, motion that is currently super um, viable and modern uh, technique that everyone starts lever leveraging. But the whole motion and the whole focus uh, would be on the outbound strategies that we will share. And uh, yeah, yeah, this this will be the first time when I'm speaking a bit more on the inbound than on outbound, just because uh, Ilya collected himself really cool examples on uh, outbound. So stay stay tuned. Uh, with regards to the inbound strategies that you can use within the product-led growth, you know that once you have someone signing up for your product, there is a particular time when you can uh, cut their attention and as long uh, um, as they're interested, you're proceeding with them. But sometimes, as we all know, uh, uh, all of these leads might be a fit for your ICP, but not ready to buy. Most of the times we close lost them with the reason of not uh, 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 not a good timing or a close loss uh, reach out three months uh, out, out of this one. So how to keep on leveraging and uh, uh, nurturing these leads, you can build the workflow within your, um, with the help of your CRM, uh, Zapier and uh, Expandy, uh, as long as you're not proceeding further with the qualified leads, you uh, move them to the nurturing sequence that you create uh, on Expandy. And uh, let me briefly show you, yeah, like how, how this bottom part could be easily implemented. Uh, with the webhooks that we internally have on the platform, 
you can easily uh, uh, abstract this audience uh, from your CRM and uh, dynamically put them in a build a, a campaign relationship building campaign, as we say. So as long as you have these people, they would keep on uh, see you and uh, get, uh, get notifications from you seeing that you're liking their posts, commenting on their posts, sending some messages and anything like that. So they are keep uh, you within their radar. And as long as they are ready, they will reach out to you or you will know when, when is the right time to do this. This is fantastic. Uh, cost-effective and energy-effective way of keeping nurturing leads that are your fit, but at the same time, not a fit at the moment to close uh, the pipeline that you need to uh, to close. Yeah, so, sorry, Marina, just, it's really, really important. So in your SaaS, you get like leads and sometimes they just say not ready, right? And you need, like, you need to have the situation when, when they are ready, they will reach out to you, right? And just... Hope that they will reach out to you. Ah, it's not the way. I mean, like they will already forget about you. So you need to keep building relationships with them. And one of the best ways is to do it on LinkedIn. Because if you just constantly send them emails again, 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 this one that will just say, okay, let's go to spam. But when it comes to LinkedIn, they will see one day, like one week, they will see that you like their posts. Another week that you endorse their skills. Another week, just saying the follow up. Another week, again, they like the post. And through different types of the engagement and interaction with them on LinkedIn, that will, like whenever they have this moment, they will say, oh, I know Marina, I need to talk to her because like yesterday she liked my post. I Like that, that's the moment. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, definitely. Uh, within the sales development strategy that we haven't had in the past, we had a separated sales navigator lease with that type of leads. Uh, so as long as we have anything like that, we will keep on nurturing them with the campaigns that we have on Expandy. So yeah, let's move forward. I think that it obviously is reasonable for everyone. Um, what's the next thing? Uh, speaking about PQLs, as I briefly mentioned that PQL is a product qualified lead. And this is uh, a really relevant uh, example that we currently use for Expandy as well. As long as someone signs up for the product, Identify it as a via domain, as a corporate client, potential B2B customer of yours. There is the time of decision and some of the signals within this time of decision that might identify, um, uh, notify you about the fact that you need to reach out uh, to these uh, uh, leads uh, just because they are sales qualified enough within the product for your conversations with them. Uh, you For that, definitely you need uh, LinkedIn URLs. Back in the days, how we've done that, uh, any signups were nurtured by the uh, email sequences. And most of the companies do it as well, but as long as um, LinkedIn becomes a primary channel for lots of sales development people, I highly recommend to reach out and leveraging it more as well. You can get and subtract all of the LinkedIn URLs with different tools. We mentioned Clay, uh, you're still able to do this with Clay. If you uh, uh, would like to find something cost-effective, you can use uh, uh, link, uh, email uh, Excel formulas uh, that are demonstrated over here. But we have guides on that uh, as well. And uh, I think that Ilya will share it uh, uh, once we have time. Uh, yes. So you have this LinkedIn URLs. Uh, and uh, within Clay, by the way, you're able to build a really simple scoring for a uh, type of the PQLs, product uh, um, qualified leads of yours, based on the uh, simple metrics, location, size of the company, number of salespeople in a team or uh, technical people in a team, as long as you're selling a product that uh, targets this audience. So the scoring model could be easily built within the platform. And as long as the PQL is qualified and now that's the time uh, for you to um, connect LinkedIn outreach with your uh, signals and scoring. So as long as the PQL is scored, it will be added to the Expandy campaign and uh, start the journey uh, with Expandy. This is a really a casual message that um, Ilya shared. This is the message that automatically you can send as long as the uh, leads for some reason identified as the ready enough to be outreached by the salesperson. Uh, we are not trying to sell, we're just trying to get connected and keep connected with the relevant audience that might be needing our help in the future. 
sell uh, uh, going further. And uh, summarizing on that, two um, um, easiest actions for you to leverage LinkedIn outreach uh, for um, inbound signups uh, uh, and uh, close lost. And speaking about outbound, I will refer to Ilya. I have a separate article that I recently shared uh, on the easiest three strategies to use for SaaS companies uh, when they start leveraging LinkedIn. Uh, you can read them separately. I will share it in the uh, in the chat. But this is the experience that uh, uh, resonates with me that Ilya had, but with some additional uh, uh, logic and tips that uh, he will share briefly now. So Ilya, over to you. Yes, so basically here we do have several, uh, by the way, I'm just sharing the article that, that Marina mentioned um, in the chat, so take a look at that. Um, when it comes to the outbound, there are actually so many ways and strategies to implement, right? But we'll try to cover only a few of them, and actually those four are the best strategies. So let's start with the first one, it's a post-engagement campaign. I will dive deeper into that a little bit later, but overall, you want and you can reach out to people who engaged with specific posts often like made by influencers or your own posts. So if people like and comment on some posts, that probably makes sense to reach out to them if they are relevant for your audience, right? The second one, the event campaign. You can scrape the events that people are writing on LinkedIn or your own events and reach out to them as well. The third thing is that you can run the LinkedIn campaign on those who engage with your cold emailing but didn't reply to you. So for example, you're running cold emailing and you see that like, okay, for example, oh my God, 10% of people replied to you, but 60% opened your emails. So it totally makes sense to reach out to the rest of people who, who opened your emails but didn't reply to you and do this on LinkedIn. Just say, hey, uh, you know, I sent you the email, you didn't reply to me, so probably it makes sense to reach out to you here. And the first thing is the signal-based campaign that we started talking about this when it comes to the sales navigator uh, filtering in clay, et cetera, et cetera. And today we're going to talk about this a bit more. Um, so let's start with the first one, post-engagement campaign. Whenever you know the influencers, your target audience, is engaging with so you know that this guy or the, the, the this woman they you know uh, your audience is, is engaging with those posts just scrape everyone who liked this specific post that went viral and that's so easy to do it within expanded so you just do it boom like this and in a few minutes you have the list of people who liked or commented on specific posts after that that's a great icebreaker for you just say hey i saw that you liked and commented on this post um on of this influencer and this post was about lead generation. That's why I'm reaching out to you because we are we are helping with lead generation with our SaaS solution, right? And that that was the 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 type of the campaign that we were running for ourselves. And with the five steps follow up sequence, we were able to reach sixty one percent, almost sixty two percent reply rate, which is an amazing amount. And a lot of people from this campaign became our clients and became our leads for, for the sales, uh, for the sales department. The second type of the thing, uh, the campaigns is basically leveraging relevant LinkedIn events. So, you know, you all know that there are some, you know, some, some cool ways, uh, so there, there, there is an opportunity to, and there is a feature on LinkedIn that you can run events. You can create events. It's like Zoom events or offline events, but you just can create the, the landing page of this event on LinkedIn directly. So the thing is that you can scrape everyone who joined that event and reach out to them. So for example, just find the events that might be relevant to your audience. You just scrape everyone who joined it by using Expandy easily, boom, like this. And then you filter this audience, just say, hey, I saw that you joined this event about SEO or about um, lead generation or about this or about that. And we can help you. That's a really, really great icebreaker to reach out to your audience and just say, hey, we were both attending the same event. And the third type of the campaign, I know that we don't have enough time, so I'll try to speed it up. The third type of the campaign is basically the signal-based campaign. Do you remember that we were uh, we were building the the the, the um, list of contacts on our sales navigator? Now it's time to reach out to them. So, and the most important thing is that whenever we use any type of the filtering in the sales navigator or clay or whatever, 
we always need to make the reference and change the language we speak to them on like using personalization. So what I mean is that whenever you know that this person just like just just for example, this person is hiring for new salespeople, just say, hey, I saw that you're hiring for new salespeople. That's pretty great that your team is getting bigger and bigger. Congratulations. Or when it comes to, hey, um, I saw that you're, you're using this, uh, the, this CRM, or I saw that you, you raised a new uh, round of funding, or I saw that you just became a vice president at, of sales at a specific company. That's the right moment to reach out to them. And in the follow-ups, you can also use all of those filters that you use and translate that into the actual message that you send. So for example, hey, I saw that you are hiring for new salespeople, and I know that you're using Zoha CRM. We have an amazing integration with Zoha CRM, and we can help your salespeople um, leverage LinkedIn automation, for example, LinkedIn outreach with our SaaS product. Let's, let's have a conversation. And whenever people understand that you know them, you know their problems, and you actually did your homework, you know, to research a bit more about them, about their current situation, they will be more likely to reply to you. And the last type of the campaign that, 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 that we can share with you is you can actually, like whenever you run any quality mailing campaign, after that, you go to your to, to the campaign once it's finished or while it's going and um, take a look at everyone who received and got the last follow-up Engage with those emails, like by clicking the links or opening the emails, and those people didn't reply to you, they still match with your ICP. They still are really, really great people to reach out to, but they didn't reply to you on email, right? So now you have two options. You can say, okay, <laughs> they didn't reply. That's why let's forget about them. Or the second option, you can go and reach out to them on LinkedIn and try to convert these people, these contacts into the actual leads on LinkedIn. And considering the fact that you have a great and you might have a great reply rate on LinkedIn and it's much bigger than on cold emailing, you will be able to generate two times or three times more leads by using and leveraging um, LinkedIn outreach in addition to your cold emailing campaigns. Um, and just quickly, let's talk about the main principles of the personalization. Because yeah, we don't have a, too much time, so I'll just briefly tell about that. The first thing is that you need to speak the same language as they do. If you are talking to the vice president of sales, you need to understand what bothers what bothers them, what is, what are the main challenges and the main pains that they have. What is the language that they use? It, for them, the contact on LinkedIn is a potential lead. For recruiters, it's a potential talent. For biz devs, it's a potential partner. So. You always use the right language and the right terms. The second one, you need to show that you understand their pains and the challenges. And just say, hey, you just became a vice president of sales. And that's why you want to change literally everything there. Let us help you do it and maximize all of your investments that you do. And the third thing is that use the hook, something unique that like, for example, you like this post or you uh, you joined this event, et cetera, et cetera. Just try to use this hook in order to start the conversation um, with a unique message. And uh, a few more things that you need to know about, um, oh, by the way, I'm just sharing with you the guides on how to do that. This is the post-engagement campaign, and this is how to scrape the, the, the events on, um, on LinkedIn in order to reach out to people. Um, but one more thing that you need to know is that you can always stand out of crowd by using some extra growth hacks. For example, one of them is the image personalization. So whenever people get the message from you, you can send a personalized image like this one. This is, you see this, the avatar of the person that was implemented within the, uh, within the image and you can automate it. So here is the guide on how to do that. Um, and there's so many different templates that you can try and just believe me, you will get a much better reply rate if you use that and uh, just try to, Use some in it in some fun and um, uh, an obvious way. Um, the second one is warm up your audience. So before reaching out to your your list of contacts, use the expand this uh, warm up or smart builder sequence where you go and like their posts, endorse their skills, view their profiles. So then you your audience will get 
um, oops, sorry, your audience will get all of those notifications that are popping up in their, like on their phone or on the web, on, on their LinkedIn. And then whenever you start actually reaching out to them and start sending the message to them, they will feel, oh my God, I know this person. I saw this person somewhere. That's the moment when they, like people reply to you much, much better. So you can easily double your reply rate by using this simple technique. And you can automate it and just implement the all follow-ups and the connection requests, et cetera, et cetera, within one flow. And um, the last thing that I will share with this uh, within this blog, it's you can also use GPT in order to personalize your whole cold link giving outreach sequence. And I'm sharing with you right now the like a few guides on how to use GPT in order to this one and this one how to use GPT you know, to personalize your messages and your sequences. I will not dive deeper into that, but there are a few really, really great rights that you can take and just implement uh, the, the techniques that we shared there. And um, now we decided, and uh, just give one thing. Give uh, me a word, uh, have a yeah. fresh um, air breath, uh, Ilya. I, I'm sure that we overwhelmed with the number of uh, uh, strategies and uh, examples, the audience, just let me know in the chat that you're still alive and have a few minutes to uh, consume uh, all of the information that has been shared. Please, uh, please give the feedback. But so far, let's summarize everything that's been said in two specific uh, case studies, use cases that have, uh, we would like to share. The first one is really applicable to the situation I've been before. Uh, that's the uh, uh, case when you need to, when you working in the technical, really engineering focused uh, product, and your ICP uh, is uh, banking, like decision making uh, by personas in banking. Uh, you go to Sales Navigator within the uh, filters. Uh, you are searching for the right audience within this uh, by persona profile, leveraging all of the tips that we uh, we've shared before. Ilya, could you please uh, move forward uh, with the next slide? After that, uh, you will find the right companies building your not lead list, but account list uh, for that type of audience that uh, is your ICP. After that, after you have this account list, uh, you go and uh, with additional filters that we've shared and buyer signals that has been recently released by uh, LinkedIn, you're able to find relevant people, not the thousands of them, but relevant specific audience, narrow targeted, uh, best book for, for your outreach. Uh, so you could personalize as much as it possible within this uh, bucket of uh, um, contacts that you've selected. And after that, uh, going further, um, uh, using uh, different strategies, we build the sequence. Uh, this is the example of the sequence to start um, uh, interacting with this audience, not just sending messages in connection requests, but leveraging all of the possible functionality that LinkedIn has, as uh, Ilya said, profile visits, uh, likes, comments, and all of that by being relevant to the relevant and narrow targeted audience, uh, uh, audience that you've identified within your ICP. Hopefully, overall, this is the skeleton that you will be putting your muscles on top uh, uh, with the experience and different strategies. But this is a really easy and simple use case that I really wanted to share. I Ilya, and over to you. Yes. And one more use case that that, that we decided to, to, to think, okay, just let's imagine you are the SEO tool and you're a SaaS product. And like you're building this as the tool for the SEO specialist. So what would you do? Um, one of the examples you can reach out to, for example, startups and your target audience is startups um, who are hiring right now for the SEO specialists. If they're hiring for SEO specialists, that probably doesn't make sense for you to say, hey, would you have a SaaS product for SEO specialists? So if you want to invest in SEO, there is a better way to do that. You can maximize every single dollar and every single cent that you put into the SEO by using our tool. So here is a quick example of what you can do. So like quickly, 
just go on, for example, Glassdoor or Indeed or so many other uh, platforms, but for this example, it's it's Glassdoor, and you find the companies that are hiring right now for the SEO specialist. You use some filtering in order to figure out, okay, in what location, what type of the company, et cetera, et cetera. And boom, you have the list of companies who match with your ICP. At the same time, they are hiring for their SEO specialist. After that, you go to Epify. It's a simple tool, you know, to scrape a simple and free tool, actually, to scrape the list of companies that you found from the Glassdoor, right? Um, yes, I will share. I will share with you the link to this guide, so no worries about that. After that, you have tons of information, your Google Sheet, and uh, you, what you need to do is just to clean this up. We just quickly delete everything that is not relevant to you, and after that, by using a really cool Google Sheet app script like you just put the script and boom you will be able to find all the decision makers that um, uh, of these companies and as a result you can also go beyond that and okay now you have the list of companies who are hiring right now for for for, for the SEOs. they are looking for SEO specialists they are in specific location you know that you have this link from the glass door you can go even beyond that and you can find um, they, for example, the performance of their websites and um, how fast their websites are. And if it's slow enough, for example, it's like 20 or 30 or 50 or 60, you can just use it in your personalization and your outreach messages. So at the end of the day, what you do, you just say, hello, I saw that you are hiring for the sales, uh, for the SEO specialist right now. And since you're investing in this, in this um, direction, we saw that your website is not optimized enough. So it's not, it's kind of slow. And that is the main principle of the SEO. So probably you can fix it right away. So they can go and fix it just tomorrow and you help them already, you give them the value. But after that, you just say, by the way, we are building an amazing SEO tool for the SEO specialist like you are, and for like, like you are trying to build the, the, the team of those, those SEO specialists. And we can help you with not only this information about how your website uh, uh, fast, whether it's fast enough or not, but also with some extra things. And as a result, people will reply to you, like with a huge amount of probability, like in the 36% reply rate of this campaign. And the last things are like, I know that, that we just a few minutes more. Um, the last thing, um, those are the, the, the case studies and the, the use cases that we decided to share with you. And we just thought, okay, what if we are, um, you know, uh, SEO tool? Or what if we're selling SaaS, uh, SaaS tool to the enterprise banking systems, right? The FinTech um, um, niche. And in addition to all the, all the other, like, you know, outreach growth hacks that you shared with you before, um, that's a really, really powerful thing. But now it's the time to say, okay, you implemented everything. Now you're getting replies and your sales development representative and your sales team is, is getting replies, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't see all of this information. You don't get any of these results within your CRM. Does it make sense? No, <laughs> because you actually need to make the decisions uh, like about what type of campaign is working, what type of the audience is, is working, what is not, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why you need to integrate expanding the whole LinkedIn automation with your CRM. And now I'll show you a really, really simple growth hack on how to do that. Uh, we don't have the direct integration with CRM, but we do have a really, really cool workaround here. So what happens here, you can use um, Expandy and Zapier, you know, to... A, whenever you get a new reply from your expanded campaigns, um, by just using webhooks functionality that we provide with, you can ask GPT and add the GPT to this, to this flow and say, hey, GPT, whether, whether this reply, whether this person is interested or not, if this person is interested, I would like to add this person to my CRM, to my HubSpot, Salesforce, or Pipedrive, or any other type of the CRM directly. If this person is not interested, please just let me know in the Slack or somewhere so I might think about how, how to work with, with these people. So at the end of the day, you will be filled up with tons of people who are coming from LinkedIn, like across your sales department, like from different sales, sales um, reps that, 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 that you have in the team. 
And you will have all of this information directly in the CRM. So you don't need to go to expand and check every single person, every single conversation. You will know that this amount of people came from, from LinkedIn outreach and this amount of people are only interested. Um, uh, uh, wow, Jake, by the, by the way, I just saw that Jake, uh, Jake has uh, and runs the SEO SaaS. So yeah, it might be extremely relevant to you. Yeah. Um, by the way, um, Maureen, do you have anything else to say about the, the integration with CRM? Because you as a head of sales might feel a huge value out of that. Yeah, uh, thank you for calling me out. At the same time, yeah, it, it might look really complex within this particular flow, but as a suggestion from my side, I needed to justify LinkedIn outreach for the management team that I have. As I told you before, like some of the companies, I might not uh, think that LinkedIn is a good source for lead generation. So uh, we've used Expandy and uh, uh, there was the flow for us to uh, capture with the Zapier integration, the uh, leads that have been responding to us over expandy and uh, the deal source or opportunity source we've been using Salesforce was changing to the expandy one. So by the end of the quarter, I was able to run the report with number of deals and opportunities that have been uh, created with the help of this type of approach and justify the efficiency and actually calculate myself the um, impact in money uh, measured in, uh, in, in a money way uh, to justify the existence of this tool. So if anyone faced with this problem, please reach out to me and we'll be happy to share our experience and the last thing is that um i saw that people were asking okay how to increase the amount of messages that you can send how to increase the amount of connection requests that you that you send there is a simple simple thing is that we've like not recently but we've introduced a pretty cool feature called mobile connector and mobile simulator. This is the type of the feature that actually can increase the amount of messages and the amount of connection requests that you send. What it actually does, it simulates the actions at the automation, not from the web web uh, app, not from the, your laptop or something else, but from your mobile device. And that's a really, really interesting thing. After tons of tests, we understood that LinkedIn has different limits for your web experience with LinkedIn and for your mobile experience. And with your mobile, you can send just more connection requests. That's why we've decided, okay, what if we like simulate your actions not from the web, but also try to simulate it from the mobile? And we technically, technically did it. And as a result, now we see that people who are using just mobile connector campaign can send much more connection requests, of course, like we cannot tell you how many connection requests you can send because it depends on your social selling index, on your on the performance of your outreach campaigns, et cetera, et cetera, on so many different factors. But in reality, just simply saying, if you are running right now LinkedIn outreach campaigns, just try to stop it and send start a new one with mobile connector and try to increase the limits by a little bit. And you will see that, okay, you can send a bit more and then you can increase it by a little bit even more. And then you will see that, okay, now I send even more connection request messages, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a really, really great feature you should try. And um, the last thing that I, I shared with you, uh, like that's, uh, that's, that's an interesting thing is that um, right now we'll share with you the bonus. And the bonus is that if you are a SaaS business and you have the sales team, we do have Marina here, and Marina is ready to offer you a really, really special and exclusive offer. And what you need to do is to go to the like to her LinkedIn profile. I'm just sharing this LinkedIn profile right now. Connect with her if you are not connected. If you are connected, just say hello. I just came from the webinar, and I want a special offer for our SaaS business you just name SaaS business and marina will know that you came from the webinar it's just not a random person but just literally from the webinar and we'll prepare a really really nice offer for you just say with the name of your SaaS and the amount of sales people that you have in your sales team and then um you will be able to talk to marina directly Thank um you so anything else to add as a gesture to everyone who are still with us, 70 people, thanks for being with us all of that time. It's definitely a really sweet 
offer for anyone. Um, by the way, for current customers of Expandient, uh, uh, if you, you uh, have three or more licenses that you currently use, you can still reach out to me and I will uh, offer you a really sweet uh, uh, terms. Uh, in, as an addition, all of our corporate customers, and I deal only with the corporate segments B2B, uh, additionally, they have the customer support team uh, and customer success and onboarding team involved into setting up the right way of uh, and suggesting you the best way to start your campaigns. Everyone who has been confused, uh, Expand already has all of the uh, growth hacks that has been shared. So post engagement, you are able to do that. All of the things that have been covered, you can try try and uh, see the results. I'm here just to leverage uh, um, your attention and to share more and give you more value. So please, with the relevant messages, I would not uh, respond to people who will not uh, mention this uh, uh, webinar. Reach out to me over LinkedIn and ask for, uh, for an offer. I will be more than happy to be the one who will give you the demo even. So thanks uh, for your time and attention. Yes, and now if you have any questions, we do have five more minutes to, to answer all of your questions. So please, if you have any questions, just ask them in the Q&A section. You have this Q&A section. So if you have any questions, just please ask those questions in the Q&A. And during five minutes, like during the next five minutes, we'll be able to reply to you um, and to, to, um, to answer all of your questions that you have. So feel free to do that. Uh, I see that some of the people have uh, have raised their hands. So if you still have the questions, just ask them in the Q&A, okay? Or in the chat, basically. In the Q&A, it's a bit better. Um, but I saw a few, a few people asked, hey, uh, how to run the post-engagement campaign will it be a part of Expandi? And definitely, yes, Marina already mentioned that. And, yeah. and that's what you already can do. And, and that's what you... Um, um, uh, that's what you already can implement directly within Expandi. So you just go, click search, and use post engagement. You just click there, and boom, uh, you scrape the post that, uh, that, that that you want to reach out to. Uh, Jake is asking, the business plan includes both LinkedIn intimation and email follow-up. Um, yes, we do have basically one plan, and uh, that includes uh, together LinkedIn automation and every single feature that we shared with you today, um, that expanded feature actually, and some email follow-up in uh, features that we have is also included within one plan. And if you want to get a special a special offer, just reach out to Marina. I just shared with you the links in the chat and say, hey, I came from this SaaS webinar. Here's the name of our SaaS. Here's the amount of salespeople that we have. And Marina will be able to, to share with you a cool, cool offer. Um, the question from Victor is, do you connect to higher level via webhooks? Do you have a tutorial on how to do that? Um, I can, I guess I can cover that question. So yeah, yes. Yes, you can use webhooks and Zapier in order to connect Expandi to any tool that you're using, actually. Um, there are two types of the connection. The first one is whenever something happens with your LinkedIn uh, campaigns, right? People reply to your so on and so forth. You can push those people to any tool that you're using, to Google Sheets, to Slack, to CRM, to high level, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a second one as well. So whenever something happens in the third party tools, like in your CRM, et cetera, et cetera, you can use the reverse web hooks, you know, to add those people to your LinkedIn outreach campaigns. Okay, um, we don't have the tutorial specifically about high level, but you can open and take a look at um, what we have with uh, the um, with the web hooks and then try it by yourself, or just ask our our, our support about um, for the help with connecting and using the web hooks. Um, uh, that's a magic, by the way. I received already at least five messages on LinkedIn instantly. So thank you so much. Uh, awesome. I also have the question from Maria. Um, uh, the question is, uh, there is a list of companies and you need to find the, uh, the company pages on LinkedIn. Actually, that is easy as it is. What you can do, actually, you can... And there, I will share with you the, the Google Sheet app script, like a simple script that will find those LinkedIn profiles of companies, actually, and that is done for free. Or if you use Clay, 
you can just upload this list and just choose add enrichment and find company LinkedIn profile based on the name and boom, in just a few seconds, you have this list. So still one minute. Okay. Left. We're finishing up. Awesome. Thanks, Old Marina. Um, how was that for you? Uh, I would do it again, definitely. It was such a limited time to cover all of the topics, but I uh, I, I truly hope that everyone um, valued some of the tips that we've shared. We definitely will repeat in some time. See you sometime in, in the next uh, uh, sessions. So, Ilya, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for this experience. Again, the last thing is that please reach out to Marina. I just shared uh, your LinkedIn again. And yes, um, tomorrow we'll send you the recording and back. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me or to Marina um, about the presentation or some content there. So thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.